My brother Ben's face is like a piece of slightly yellow ivory. His high, white forehead is knotted fiercely by an old man's scowl. His mouth is like a knife. His smile, the flicker of light across the blade. His face is like a knife and a blade and a flicker of light. And when he fastens his hard, white fingers and his scowling eyes upon something he wants to fix, he sniffs with sharp and private concentration. Thus women looking feel a well of tenderness for his pointed, bumpy, always scowling face. Somebody's gonna drive the Huns out of the sky. Poor old England can't be expected to do it alone. Well, it's their mess, isn't it? Well, it says here there's an American flying corps forming in Canada. Ben Ganty, what are you thinking? All my life in this one little bird, Fatty. And besides getting away, I'd be doing my bit. Would they take you so old? Well, it says here, 18 to 32. Aren't the physical standards pretty high? <sighs> Listen to it. Well, I'm in good physical condition. You're 20 pounds underweight. I never saw anyone like you for not eating. McGuire gave me a thorough checkup this spring. How would your family feel if you went? <laughs> what thing? The batty borders? My apology, Fatty. But I don't associate with them. Except Jean. Nobody knows. know I was gay. But to fly up there, in the wonderful world of the sky, up with the angels. If you never have agreed to live here for one day, that's the answer. You work yourself to the bone. For what? Mrs. Perth, the other board have almost finished dinner. Let's for dessert, Helen. Charlotte Bruce. They're like children with a table. I told you you'd better get in there, Fatty. I was trying to do without, but I'm afraid that calls me. Ben, where's Mama? How should I? Because I've had to serve the entire dinner alone. <laughs> Holes in my socks. Trouser button missing. And before I married you, I had the reputation of being dapper. <laughs> I bet she's off somewhere with Uncle Will, and I'm left to slave in the kitchen for a bunch of old cheap orders. That's her tactic. Dapper Hugh Barton. It said so in the newspaper when we were married. You know that, don't you? Don't you? And do I ever get a word of thanks for it? Do I get as much as a go to hell for it? <coughs> no. Why, Shaw Child, she'll say. I work more than anybody. And most of the time, damn her, she does. Helen! 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 You come in, you and help me. Well, how are the cash masters selling you? Putting the cigar box out of business. I got a good order in Raleigh last week. I already put away $900 toward our own little house. Oh. You got that one, you. You and Helen. <clears throat> I guess they don't have to advertise the good jobs, do they? The really big jobs? They wouldn't be here in the newspaper, would they? Why? If I could find something good here in town, not on the road so much. Maybe I could talk Helen into moving away. Ben, you hear things around the paper. Hugh! Hugh! I'll keep my ears open, Hugh. Well, I guess I don't want to make Helen any matter at me. Thanks, Ben. Anything. Couldn't bear it. 
He told me once because of some bad trade he made when he was a young man up in Pennsylvania. You can bet your bottom dollar if I've been in the picture then, there'd been no loss. Or the loss had been on the other side. That's a good one. You know us Pentlands. Well, I have to get after Mr. Gant right today about the bank off. You let me know when you've warmed them up enough for me to talk to him. I'll take a great deal of warming up, I can tell you. You're so blame stubborn about that precious old marble yard, but I'll do it. Uh, give me a jingle when you went to look at the farm property. I'll drive you out there. Thanks, Will. I appreciate it. Ben, what are you doing home this early? I'm working afternoons this week. Oh, will you meet downtown? I usually do. Ben, you're so short with me. Why is that? You hardly even look at me anymore. You know I can't stand not being looked at by the person I'm talking to. Do you feel all right? I feel good. Oh, I guess the train's heading into the station. Did Eugene head down there yet? How should I know? Eugene! Are you up in your room? Eugene! Good boy, my head a little juicy. Ben, I hope you haven't been lying around here wasting time with that Mrs. Purd again. Listen. Well, I'll tell you what, it doesn't look right, Ben. I mean, what must the other boarders think? A woman her age, a drinking woman, married? Why can't you go find someone young and free and pretty to be with? I mean, you're the nicest looking boy I've got. I just don't understand it. Well, if it'll make you happy, Mama, I'll look around. And that's Mr. Clark's newspaper. You know, he's finicky about reading it first. Hold it up before you go. Yes, Mama. And the train's just coming to the station. You head over to that depot. Today, but I went yesterday. Every day until every room is filled. Now the advertisement cards are on the table. Go. I swear, 17 is an impossible age. I mean, I don't know why he complains. It's not like he's got anything better to do. He spends all his time up there scribbling and dreaming. Well, the other boarding house is sending their quarters. Never you mind, Ben Gant. You used to do it. Little enough I do for you boys. Have you got the cards? In my pocket. Let me see. Visit Dixieland, Altamont's homiest boarding house. It should be homeliest. Eugene! What? I hate drumming up trade. It's deceptive and it's begging. Oh, my, my. Dream of Eugene Gant. What do you think this world is all about? We are all, all of us, trying to say something. Now you head over to that depot right this minute. For heaven's sake, boy, spruce up. Shoulders back. And smile, look pleasant. <laughs> look like you are somebody. Gee, what are you walking like that for? Like what? Well, what are you limping for? Oh my god, those are my shoes you've got. I threw them out yesterday. They're practically brand new. They're too small for me. They must be killing it. Ben, please. Just because you can afford to throw out brand new shoes. Oh, for God's sake, you asked me to watch right now, can he? His toes must be like pretzels. They're fine. I'll, I'll, they're all right. I'll get used to them. My God, it's a damn disgrace. Setting out in the street like a hired man. A gene should be on that for going to college. That's enough. That's enough of that. Now, I don't want to hear another word about it. Gene will go to college when we can afford it. This year, we'll have pop up the shop. Oh, I thought you were going to warm up, Papa, so we'll sell the shop. Ben Gant, that was not intended for your ears. So I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't say anything to Mr. Gant until I have. Hurry up now, son. Go get us a customer. Why should Papa sell his shop? Now, but there's no use to worry about my business. You go tend to yours. What business do I have to attend to? Well, get busy. Get busy. Go help Papa at the shop. I don't want to be a stone cutter. Well, then go back to delivering newspapers or... Help Uncle Will at his real estate office, but keep the ball rolling, child. Now hurry or you're going to be late. Mama, dinner's practically over. I'm no sleep. I'll be right in. What's the matter with him, Ben? What is the matter with that boy? What's the matter with all of you? I certainly don't know. You know, sometimes I get frightened. It seems as if all of you are at the end of something, dissatisfied, and looking for something else. But it just can't be. A house divided against itself cannot stand. <laughs> I'll bow, I don't know what we're all coming to. 
truthful this time. Smart grill, smart grill. Please, uh, friends, don't push me. Get away from me. All right, then, get You can walk, walk. Let's go the bad way. Where are you? Where are you? Lowe's to the low. Boarding house swine. Oh, merciful God, what a trash. That it should come to this. Papa, come on. Papa, please. Now it can lords and ladies gain. On the mountain dawns the day. <laughs> Don't let me disturb you, little tay tay. Go right ahead, help yourself. Another help with the mashed potatoes, Mrs. Platt. Put another tire around your milk. Mr. Gant, I'd be ashamed, I'd be ashamed. Who speaks? I thought you were sick. <laughs> I'm not sick about it. I'm in a wild and blind fury. <laughs> Let me help you. Just one moment. You don't think I know my own home when I see it? This is not where I live. I reside at 92 Woodson Street. That was some years ago. But this is your home now. This barn? This damnable, this murderous, bloody barn? Home? Oh, holy hell, what a travesty on nature. Why don't we carry him in? You stay out of this, Petlin. You're the very one that raised him. Petlin? Now that's the name for you. Where are you, Will Petlin? You're a mountain grill. Your father was a mountain grill and a horse thing. And he was hanged in the public square. Tom, come on. Would you like some coffee? There's some right here. Ha, some Mrs. Stamps good coffee? Take some of that good bourbon if you have it. Check some. Give him a drink and maybe he'll pass out. Drink? Gene, Dr. McGuire, you know there isn't a drop of alcohol in his hats. I have some. <laughs> I always keep it with me in case of a train accident. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's have it. Come oh, on, good God, this will fill one of his teeth. Well, let's have it. Come on. Oh, you can have it. You gotta come to the veranda to drink it. Uh, mountain grills, vipers, hooks to the low. I'll stand here until you take me home. Is it anybody gonna take me home? Papa, why have you been drinking again when you know what it does to you? Helen, I have a pain right here. Uh, of course you do. Come with me now. I'll put you to bed and get you some. I gotta sit down, sit down. You and me sit and talk. Would you like to hear some Keats, beautiful Keats? God, it's obvious, man. No, he will. Mama, he's sick. Oh, well, Mr. Gant, if you feel so bad, why don't you let Thassin go inside? The whole neighborhood's looking at you. Old man Gant came home drunk. Old man Gant came home drunk. Old man Gant came home drunk. <laughs> Are you drinking with him too, Mr. Talking? Well, several of us were, Mrs. Gant, I regret to say. I'll have Tim Lockman thrown in jail for this. He started out so peaceable like. I warned him for the last time. Just on beer. Get off my princess. <laughs> old man Gant, get him all drunk. Old man Gant, get him all drunk. Doctors, thieves, and bloodsuckers. The paths of glory lead but to the grave. Gray's elegy. Only four cents a letter on any tombstone you choose by the master carver. Any orders? It's the devil's own pitchfork. Oh, don't let them put me under the knife. Promise me, daughter, promise me. Mm. Over the stones, round his bones. He's only a beggar that nobody owns. Good God, he's on his feet again. Here, let's get him in the house. Oh, I see it, I see it. Do you see it? The dark man's shadow. There, there he stands, the great reaper. As I always knew he would. So you come at last to take the old man home. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on my soul. What? He's all right, Mrs. Gant. Just passed out. Come on, man, let's carry him in. Well, 
they come and they go. But you're here now. Isn't that bad? James? 13, 14, 15. There. Thank you, dear. Miss James is going to be staying with us for a while. We hope. I'll take you out after you. We'll be cozy and comfortable here. I'll show you the rest of the house later. That father of yours, you know, he kicked me. I don't want to tell you where. <laughs> Why don't you look out for him more, Ben? It's up to you boys now. Are your mother sick? Or Dixieland? You know, I warned her about him. A born wanderer like he is. And a widower. But you can't advise women, no. Not when it comes to love and sex. You might thank me for my help. No one else has. Thank you, Uncle Will. A bunch of ungrateful cats. You're the only one of them who has any class. <coughs> Did you hear about that? There's a soul in town who hasn't. What's it all about? It doesn't make any sense. Can you figure it out, Ben? Why does he do it? How should I know? Is McGuire almost through? Ben, remember when we were younger? We used to walk the paper route together in the morning. We talked a lot then. Listen to him. Oh, we are talking. If father hates it so much, why does he stay? You stupid little fool. It's, it's like being caught in a photograph. Your face is there. And no matter how hard you try, how are you going to step out of a photograph? Oh, shut up now, will you? Hello, Doc. Your sister, she can't handle that old goat like a lamb. Funny thing, though, people like him, he's a good man when sober. Is he all right? He's going to be. Oh, McGuire, can I talk to you a minute about me? If you have one. Shoot, Ben. Well, don't you have somewhere else to be? No. <laughs> What's the matter, Ben? You got pyrrhea of the toenail or something more private? I'm just tired of your days around here. I want to push them somewhere else. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I suppose you hear there's a war going on in Europe. I've decided to enlist in Canada. What do you want to do that for? Well, you keep out of this. It's a good question, Ben. Do you want to save the world? This world? Why, for hell's sake? You'll recommend me, won't you? You examined me just a couple of months ago. Well, for a war, the requirements are quite different. Stick out your chest. Feet, good arch, pigeon toed. Since when do you need toes to shoot a gun? How are your teeth, son? Aren't you overdoing it, Doc? <coughs> Why'd you do that for me? I have to save this world without you, Ben. What do you mean? That's all, that's all. <coughs> Am I all right? Who said you weren't <coughs> all right? I'll quit your kidding. What's the rush? We may have ended this war ourselves before too long. Isn't that right, son? I want to know. Am I all right or not? Yes, man. You're all right. You're the most all right person I know. You're a little run down is all. You need some meaningful bones. You can't exist with a cup of coffee in one hand and a cigarette in the other. And besides, the Altamont air is good for you. Stick around, Ben. Big breaths. Big breaths. Thanks. Well, as a doctor, you're a fine first baseman. Take it easy. Try not to care too much. <coughs> He's right, Ben. You should really try to look after yourself more. Uh, he just has no spirit about the war. That's all the matter with him. I didn't know you wanted to get away from here so badly. Come here, you little bum. God, haven't you got a clean shirt to wear? Here, uh, take this and go get that lousy damn haircut off and 
Well, get yourself some new shoes while you're at it. <laughs> My God, you look like a lousy tramp. Man, I can't keep taking your money. Well, uh, what else have you got? Here. No. You listen to me, all right? You go to college, understand? Don't settle for anyone or anything. Well, learn your lesson from me. I'm a hack on hate paper. And that'll never be anything else. But you can. Well, get money from it. Any way you can. Go bank it. Take it. Steal it. But, but get it from it somehow. Get it and get away. To hell with the gene. Let's help them all. <laughs> Neither Luke, nor Stevie, nor I made it. But you can, Gene. I, I let her hold on. Hold on until it was too late. Well, don't let that happen to you. But, and Gene, please yourself. Don't try to please everyone. Where's she from? I don't know. I don't even know her name. Well, Miss James, I'll have to announce her arrival in my society. Firm young line of spring, budding, tender, virgin, like something swift with wings which hovers in a wood among the feathery trees. Suspected, but unkind. Unseen. Oh, exquisite. Oh, you want to go downtown with me? Well, I'll buy you a couple of mocha. Maybe I'll have to stay here, man. With her around? I don't blame you. I myself dream of beautiful women all the time. Ben, if you dream of beautiful women, how is it then? Well, <laughs> Mrs. Pert? Well, Fatty's a happy woman. But there's no pain she feels she has to unload onto someone else. Besides, she's adorable as a duck, don't you think? I guess you're right. I like her myself, sure. Someday you'll figure out what I mean. Oh, but I've got to get to work. Ben, I'm glad they won't take you in Canada. Listen to him. I was crazy to think of going anyway. I've got to bring you up first, don't I? Brown. My, everything's quiet now. Lovely warm day, isn't it? Pony boy, pony boy, won't you be my pony boy? Don't say no, can't we go right across the plains? Carry me, carry me, right away with you. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up.
of the weakling. All the other members of this family, well, they're steers, mountain goats, eagles. Except father, recently, unless he's drunk. Do you know them? I still think of them as I used to when I was a little boy. What? I'm sorry. The house he built on Whistle Street for Mama with his own two hands. All the great armloads of food he used to carry home. All the giant fires he used to build. The women that he loved at Madame Elizabeth's. Two and three at night. <laughs> oh, it's so nice for parents to have their children think of them as they were young. I mean, that's the way I'd want my children to think of me. Oh, you know what I mean. Listen to her. Ben, who are you always talking to like that? Who? Him? Well, that's Grover, my twin. It was a habit I got into when he was still alive. I wish you could be when I was younger. I was some different. Oh, I bet you weren't half as nice and warm and round as you are now. Ben, don't let your mother hear you say that. She thinks. Who cares what she thinks? Dear, I only hope that when the right girl comes along, you're not sorry for the affection you've lavished on me. Oh, I don't want the right girl. Want some more beer? I've got another bottle. I'd love some more. Don't understand. Jelly roll isn't everything, is it? Ben, the end of kind of vulgar phrase is that. Oh, it's a stump down word. I used to deliver papers down there. Well, sometimes these snaggy women wouldn't have money to pay their bill. So they'd pay you in jelly roll. Ben, your little brothers. Oh, do you know what jelly roll is? Uh, don't you, Gene? Oh, where do you think he's been his entire life? On Mama's run parlor? Come on, Ben. Well, there's another word I remember. Oh, from the eighth grade. We had this, this thin, anxious-looking teacher. <laughs> All the boys had a poem about her. <laughs> Old Miss Groody has good duty. Old Miss Groody has good duty. Old Miss Groody has good duty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Good evening. What? <laughs> I said, good evening. G good evening. you. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I, I meant to say, uh, good evening. How do you do? Good do you do? I think I like that much better. Good do you do? <coughs> you think that's funny? It's about as funny as most things I do. May I sit down? Please. I'm Laura James. I know. <laughs> uh, I'm Eugene Gant. You know, I've seen you before. Yes, uh, earlier this afternoon. No, I mean before then. I saw you throwing those advertising cards in the gutter. You did? I was coming from the station. You know, where the tracks meet the street. You were just standing there staring at it. I came right up to you and smiled. I never got such a snub in my life. You must be crazy about trains. <laughs> you stood right beside me? Where are you from? Richmond, Virginia. Richmond. That's a big city, isn't it? Yes. How many people? I'd say about 120,000. Do you have pretty parks and uh, boulevards? Oh, yes. Tall, fine buildings with elevators? Yes, it's quite the metropolis. Theaters and stuff like that? Yes, lots of nice shows come to Richmond. Does that interest you? <coughs> you have a big library. Did you know that it has over 100,000 books in it? I didn't. 
Oh, well, it does. I read that somewhere. It, it would take a long time to read 100,000 books, wouldn't it? I imagine it would. Uh, I'd figure about 20 years. How, how many books do they let you take out at once? I'm really not sure. They only let us take out two here. That's a shame. Oh, you have some great colleges in Virginia. Did, did you know that uh, William & Mary is the second oldest college in the country? Is it? What's the oldest? Harvard. Oh, I want to study there. Uh, first, Chapel Hill. That's our state university. And then Harvard. And then, I want to travel the world and learn all its languages. I love words. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> yes. I, I do. Are you laughing at me? Of course not. Well, you are smiling a lot, though. I'm enjoying myself. I like talking to you. I like talking to you, too. I always talk better with older people. <laughs> <laughs> they know so much more. Like me? Yes. You're very interesting. Am I? Yes. You're very interesting. Mr. James. Mr. Platt. 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 James Platt. It's a lovely evening. Would you like to take a stroll? It, it feels to me like it's going to rain. Oh, I don't know. It's going to rain all right. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure. Perhaps another time, Mr. Platt. Sir, good night, Miss James. Good night, Sonny. Want to St. Louis to the fair when I was only five. Have you ever touched one? What? A, a locomotive. Have you ever put your hand on one? You can't fully understand things until you touch them. <coughs> Aren't they rather hot? Even a cold one standing in the station yard. You know what you feel? You feel the shining steel rails from under it, and they send a message right into your hand. A message. Of all the mountains that locomotive ever passed, all the flowing rivers, uh, the towns, the people, the houses, the wash lines flapping in the cool breeze, the beauty of the people and the way they live and the way they work. A farmer waving to you from his field, a kid from the schoolyard, the faraway places it roars through at night, places you don't even know, can hardly imagine. Do you believe it? Do you feel the rhythm of a whole life, a whole country, clicking through your hand? I'm not sure we all would. I believe you do. How, How long do you think? I'm sorry, please. No, you. How long do you plan on staying here, Miss James? My name is Laura. I wish you'd call me that. Laura, that's a pretty name. Do you know what it means? No. I read a book once on the meaning of names. Laura is the laurel, the great symbol of victory. Victory? Hmm. Maybe someday I'll live up to that. What does Eugene mean? Oh, I forget. You forget? It means well born. How old are you? Why? No reason, I'm just curious of people's ages. As am I, how old are you? I'm 21, you? 19! <laughs> how long do you plan on staying here for? I'm not sure exactly. You're only 21? How old did you think I was? Uh, about that, about 21, that's not old at all. <laughs> I don't feel it is. I was afraid you would think I was too young to be wasting time with like this. I don't think 19 is young at all. It isn't really, is it? Ben, what's your full name? Benjamin Harrison Gallagher. <coughs> Why? That's funny. I thought it was short for benign. Oh, benign. Listen to her. Helen? No, it isn't Helen, Mr. Gage. That's water. 
take it away. Why aren't you asleep? Do you have any pain? None but the everyday pain of thinking. You wouldn't know what that is. I wouldn't know. How could you? You're always so busy puttering. All the work I do around here, you call it puttering? Some people are doers, some are thinkers. Someone has to do, Mr. Gaines. Someone has to. Or I know you think on yourself as this artist fellow, but personally, a man that has to be brought bodily through the streets, screaming curses if you call that artistic. Oh, the hell happens that again? Shut up, woman! Mr. Gaines, I came in here to see if there was something I could do for you. Only pity in my heart. Now will you please turn to look at me when I talk to you? You know I can't stand being turned away from. You're a bloody monster. You would drink my heart's blood. You don't mean that. Come this far together. I guess we can continue to the end. You know, only this morning I was thinking about the first day we met. Do you realize it was 31 years ago come July? Oh, merciful God, 31 long miserable years. <laughs> I can remember, like it was yesterday. I just come down from Cousin Sally's and <coughs> passed by your shop, and there you were. I vow you're as big as one of your tombstones, and it's dusty. That wild, dangerous look in your eye. You were romantic in those days. Fellow would say a regular court and fool. Miss Pentland, you said, you have to come into this hot and grubby shop. It's like a cooling summer shower. A cool and summer shower, that's just what you said. And you've been a wet blanket ever since. <laughs> I'll forgive your little jokes, Mr. Gaines. I'll forgive your little jokes. Do you? Do you ever forgive me, Eliza? If I can make you understand something. I was such a strong man. I was dozing just now, dreaming of the past, the far past. The people, the place I came from, those great barns of Pennsylvania. The order, the thrift, the plenty, it all started out so right there. There I was, a man who set out to get order and position in life. And what have I come to? Only rioting and confusion, searching and wandering. There was so much before, so much. Now it's all closing in. My God, Eliza, where has it all gone? Why am I here now, at the rag end of my life? The years are all blotted and blurred. My youth a red waste. I've gotten old, an old man. But why here? Why here? Because you belong here, Mr. Gaines. That's why you belong here. As I get weaker and weaker, you get stronger and stronger. Well, Sean, you feel that way. It's because you have no position in life. If you'd listened to me once, things would be different. You didn't realize, did you, when I told you that marble shop of yours would be worth a fortune someday? Will and I were down town this morning. Uh. And old Mr. Beacon from the bank stopped us on the street and he said, Mrs. Gay, the bank is looking for a site to build a big new office building. And do you know which one we have our eye on? And I said, no. We have our eye on Mr. Gay's shop. And we're willing to pay $20,000 for it. Now what about that? And you came in here with only pity in your heart. <laughs> well, Mr. Gay, I'll tell you something. $20,000 is a lot of money, like the devil says, it ain't okay. And my angel, my Corara angel, you were going to sell her too. The angel, the angel, the angel. I'm so tired of hearing about that angel. You always have been. Money dribbled from your honey lips, but never a word about my angel. I bet I've started 20 pieces of marble trying to capture her. But my life's work doesn't interest you. Don't you think if after all these years you haven't been able to do it, your gift as a stone pro may be limited? Yes, Mrs. Gantick, may be limited, may be limited. Then why don't you sell the shop? We can pay off the mortgage in Dixieland, and you can set back big as you please off the income of the borders for the rest of our lives. Oh, holy hell! Wowie! The borders! That parade of incognito pimps and prostitutes calling themselves penniless dancing masters, pining widows, part-time teachers, and God knows what all. Woman, have mercy! That shop is my last refuge on earth! Oh, I beg you, let me die in peace! You won't have long to wait! You can do what you want after I'm with it after I'm gone. But give me a little comfort now and leave me my work. At least my first wife understood what it meant to me. Ah, so You swore you would never mention her name to me again. Well, Mr. Gate, I guess I never will understand you. I guess that's just the way it is. Good night. Try to get some sleep. 
reckon it's like a fellow says. Some people never get to understand each other. Not in this life. Curse the day I was given life by that bloodthirsty monster of bone! No, oh, Jesus, I beg of you. I know I've been bad. Forgive me. Have mercy and pity upon me. Give me another chance in Jesus' name. Oh! Anything on this train, I better look out. You 
you're the sharpest trainer in town. Why, Charlotte's a dope, I say. Not letting on that I believe him or anything. All I want is a fair return on my investment. I believe in every man making his profit and giving the other fellow a chance. Keep the ball rolling, I say. Let it as big as you please. You're the sharpest trainer in town. Oh dear, well, I have to get to those napkins for tomorrow. Uh, you coming in, son? In a little bit. All right, now. You don't forget to turn out that sign. Good night, sir. Get a good night's sleep, boy. You mustn't neglect your head. Good night, Mama. Don't stay up too late working. Jean, do you know where Sunset Terrace goes over the hill? At the top of the rise, above Dick Webster's place. That's my lot. You know what I mean, don't you? Yes, Mama. Well, that's what we're going to build, at the very top. I'll tell you what, though. In another five years, that lot will be worth twice the value. You mark my words. Yes, Mama. Now, for God's sakes, go inside and go to bed. No, sir. They needn't think I'm going to slave away all my life. I've got plans, same as the rest of them. You'll see. Well, good night, sir. Good night, Mama. Laura! Laura! Did you hear all that? Sorry. What's there to be sorry about? Would you like to take a walk? It's a lovely evening. It might rain. I love the rain. See, look at here. I made a map of it. Sunset Terrace goes. Gee? <laughs> you too? I got if I can't get an education. <laughs> well, sure, you'll get your education if my plans work out. In the meantime, though, it wouldn't hurt to work at Uncle Will's office, would it? I, I don't know anything about real estate, though. What is there to know? Buying and selling is an instinct, and you've got it. Plus, you've got my eyes for seeing and looking and remembering, and that's all that matters. Well, there isn't a bite of statistic in all of that than I carry around in my head. What they're making, what they owe, what they're hiding, what they show. <laughs> you see, Eugene, I'm a poet too. A poet? And I didn't even know it. <laughs> but my feet sure do show it. They're long feathers. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I can't even seem to get a smile out of you this morning. 
You're acting so strange this week. James, stand with your shoulders back. If you go humped over, you get lung trouble as sure as you're born. One thing, my friend. So straight as a rod. Well, not so straight anymore. Jean, what in the world are you hopping on one foot and then the other for? Do you have to use the bathroom? Mama, asking me that at my age. Then why are you fidgeting? It's not every day we get a nice chance to chat like this. Papa's paying me 30 cents an hour. <laughs> paying you? How did you manage that? I told him I needed the money. For heaven's sake, what for? You have your room and board. Don't you think I need new clothes for a start? Why, shop, the rate you're growing, it doesn't pay. Has my baby gone and got himself a girl? What of it? What if it were true? Haven't I as much a right as anyone? Why, Shaw, you're too young for girls. Especially that Miss James. She's practically a mature woman compared to you. I don't think you realize how young you are just because you're tall and read a lot of books. Oh, that be your Uncle Will for me. Say, how long does it take your father to buy a newspaper anyway? He said he'd be right back. Is it something important? Well, I've got, I've got plans, James, for him and for all of us. Tell him I'll be back. Second thought, don't tell him. I'll just catch him. And I want you to be there, too. Work hard, child. Many a time, son. Many a time. Well, what did your mother have to say? Did you see her? I've been sitting over at Lockwood's waiting for her to leave. What a long way to bang. You promised the doctor you wouldn't go to Lockwood's again. Now, what difference does it make? A couple of beers won't hurt what I've got. Was that Will Petlin she went off with? Yep. And she said she'd be back? Uh-huh. I don't mind what she's up to. Yes, she'll be back with freshly drawn up papers tucked in her bosom. <laughs> Yes, when you touch the breast of Miss Eliza, you feel the sharp crack in the bills of sand. <laughs> Not like the bosom of the same. She begins to look better after that, doesn't she? I've been neglecting her lately. By how she gleams. Papa, you were young when you got married, weren't you? What? When did you get married? Well, it was 31 bitter years ago, when your mother first came wriggling, wriggling around that corner at me, like a snake on a belly. I'm not talking about Mama. I'm talking about Cynthia. By God, you better not let your mother hear you say that name. I want to know, how old were you? Well, I must have been 28. Ah, oh, Cynthia, Cynthia. You loved her, didn't you? She had a real glowing beauty. Sweet, noble, proud, and yet soft. Soft. She died in her bloom. She was older than you, wasn't she? Yes, 10 years. 10 years, but it didn't make a difference, did it? She was a skinny, mean, tubercular old hag who nearly drove me out of my mind. Then why do you talk about her the way you do? To Mama. Because I'm a bastard, Jean. Because I'm a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Laura. Say, isn't this a pretty little somebody looking for you? Hello, Mr. Gant. Hello. Hello, Eugene. So, this is your shop. This is a real pleasure. It's not often I see smiling people around here. <laughs> Have you got fed up with our little resort, young lady? I'm really just starting to enjoy it here. What do you find to enjoy about it? Oh, the hills are so beautiful. Jean and I have had lots of nice walks. Ah, so it's Jean who makes it pleasant for you, eh? Come on, Mama. <laughs> You're fond of Jean, aren't you? Well, he's very kind. Jean's a good boy, our best. <laughs> well. This shop is very interesting. How did you get into stone cutting, Mr. Gant? Well, I guess you'd call it a passion with some people. When I was a boy about Jean's age, I happened to pass a shop something like this. And this very angel was there. She's Carrara Marble from Italy. As I looked at her smiling face, I felt more than anything in the world. I wanted to carve delicately with a chisel. It was as though if I could do that, I could bring something of me out onto a piece of marble. All the reminiscences of the old I was born the young. No, they don't. So I walked into that shop and asked the stone cutter if I could become an apprentice. Well, I worked there for five years. When I left, I bought the angel. 
I've hardly had her out of my sight since. I bet I started 20 pieces of armor, but I've never been able to capture her. I guess there's no use to try it anymore. Laura, would you like to take a look around? I'm afraid I might be bothered to wait your work. No, no, no. Show her about, Jean. <laughs> I have some other things I must do. <laughs> Though some people find looking at tombstones depressing, still we all come to them in the end. <laughs> Why do you think you might be bothered? Well, you are supposed to be working. <laughs> you can't see me. What is it, Laura? Something's different today. Oh, don't pay any attention to me. It's just I, I don't know. What's in the basket? I asked how you pack us a picnic lunch. Great, let's go. Not now. Laura, what's the matter? Have I done something wrong? Jean, Helen knows about us. And your father, and he- I don't care. I want the whole world to know about us. Come on. Let's go. No, let's not talk about this now. My, this is pretty marble. Where's this from? Laura, you don't give a damn where that marble came from. I'm ashamed, Jean. I'm ashamed. Laura, my darling, what is it? What's the matter? Jean, I lied to you. I'm not 21. I'm 23. Is that all? <laughs> You're not 19 either. You're 17. I'm a thousand years old all the love I've stored up for you. I'm an older woman. In God's name, what does that have to do with us? There have to be rules. Rules are made by jealous people. They make rules to love by so that those who have no talent for it can at least pretend. We don't need rules. We don't need to pretend. Laura, my sweet, what we have is so beautiful, so rare. How often in life can you find it? No, gee, you're just a boy. You have a whole world just waiting for you. You are my world. You always will be. Don't let anything destroy us. Don't leave me alone. I've always been alone. It's what you want, my dear. It's what you'll always want. You couldn't stand anything else. You'd get so tired of me. And you'll forget. You'll forget. I'll never forget. I won't live long enough to. Will you forget? How could I? Nothing has changed, has it? Has it? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Madam Elizabeth. Is Mr. Gant here? He's inside. Well, don't let me keep you from what you're doing. <laughs> Mr. Gant! Elizabeth, my dear Elizabeth. Well, this is a surprise. Six years, W.O. Six years. Except to nod to time. What a thief you are. P.S. It's stolen from you. Why, you're still as handsome and stylish as ever. Won't you sit down? W.O. You and your gallant manners. But I'm no chicken anymore. And no one knows it better than I do. If only you knew how often we talked about you up on Eagle Crescent. What a man you were. Wild. Bacchus himself. Oh, you remember that old song you used to sing? Life was many songs in those days, Elizabeth. <laughs> but when you got liquored up enough, don't you remember? Of course, I can't boom it out like you do. Up in that back room, boys. Up, up in, in that, that back room. room all, all those kisses, kisses and, and all those hugs. hugs. Among, Among the fleas and the bugs, the bugs. <laughs> I am the evening's clue. Boys, I pity your sad doom. Up, up in that, that back room, boys. Up in that, that back room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the loss of all that. That's the worst of us. <laughs> oh, W-O, W-O. I do miss you. How are all the girls, Elizabeth? That's what I came to see you about. I lost one of them last night. Oh. I'm sorry to hear that. Sick, only three days. I'd have done anything in the world for her. A doctor and two trained nurses by her side all the time. 
Too bad, too bad. Which one was it? Since your time, W.O. We called her Lily. Lily? I couldn't have loved her more if she had been my own daughter. Twenty-two. A child. A mere child. And not a relative who would do anything for her. Her mother died when she was thirteen. And her father is a mean old bastard who wouldn't even come to her deathbed. He will be punished. Sure as there's a god in heaven, the old bastard. I hope he rots. Such a fine girl and such a bright future for her. Why, she had more opportunities than I ever had. And you know what I've done here. I'm a rich woman today, W.O. Why, not even your wife owns as much property as I do. I beg your pardon. I hope you don't mind me speaking of her. Mrs. Gant and I both understand that property is what makes a person hold one's head up. And Lily could have had all that too. Poor Lily. No one understands how much I'm going to miss her. Suppose you'll be wanting something for her grave. Here's a sweet lamb. Couchant lamb, it's called. Couchant is French for lying down. That should be appropriate. <laughs> no, I've already made up my mind. I want the angel. Oh, you don't want her, Elizabeth. Why, she's a white elephant. Nobody can afford to buy her. I can. And I want her. My dear Elizabeth, I have other fine angels. How about this one, my own carpet? No, ever since I first saw that angel, I thought when someone who means something to me goes, she's going to be on the grave. That angel's not for sale, Elizabeth. Then why should you have her out here? The truth is I've promised her to someone. Well, I'll buy her from whoever you promised and give them a profit, cash on the line. Who did you sell her to? My dear Madam Elizabeth, here is a nice expensive, expensive Egyptian urn. Your beloved Lily would like that. Egyptian urn? Ha! Huh. Peapots. <laughs> I want that angel. It's not for sale. Anything you like, everything you like, I'll give it to you. I'll make you a present for old time's sake, but not my angel. <sighs> Let's not waste any more time over this. How much W.O.? She's Carrara Marble from Italy, and too good for any whore! Eugene! Eugene! Why, you old libertine! How dare you speak to me like that! Yes, Papa, what is it? Your father is a <coughs> stubborn old nut! That's what! I'm sorry if I've offended you. You have, W.O. Deeply. Jean, will you be so kind and see if you can wait upon the madam? I've heard the trouble your mother has with the old terror, and now I believe it. All I'm asking is that you sell me the angel for a dear girl who's gone, a dear young girl in the flower of her life, like this young girl here. Madam Elizabeth, I believe Papa is saving this angel for his own grave. Oh, oh. Why didn't he say so? Why didn't he tell me? Poor, poor W.O. Well, of course in that case, if you were to think of your death here, if you can, I mean, we never know, you never know. <laughs> Is there anything here that would appeal to you? Lambs are for anybody. Put your hand on it. Feel it. It's cool, content, and restless. And you could have a memorial poem engraved upon the base. A poem? Yep. Here's a book of 55 memorial poems. Let's see if we can find one you'll like. Ah, here's one. See if you like this. 
She went away in beauty's flower before her youth was spent, ere life and love had lived their hour. God called her, and she went. <laughs> Yet whispers faith upon the wind, no grief to her was given. She left your love and went to find a greater one in heaven. She left your love and went to find a greater one in heaven. I hope you never lose someone you love, boy. Well, let me know when my little lying down lamb is ready. She seems nice. <laughs> Besides, 
This is his street. Everyone knows him here. There's Mr. Janineau's shop next door. Woodruff's across the way. <coughs> All the people in the places they were those. <coughs> and Tim Lockman's down the block. Ah, oh, that's another reason for getting rid of this place. Keep yourself out of ten patients' way, huh, Mr. Kane? Certainly do love it here. Don't give it up, Papa. What are you trying to do to him, Mama? Now look at here. You're a fine stone child. But haven't I always said so? But it's time you went. You want to live a long time, don't you? Well, sometimes I'm not sure. Well, you do. And I want you to live a long time. We all want to. People talk on this short but sweet life, but we all want to live. Hey, look at me. I'm 57 years old. I was raised six children born ten of them. And I've worked hard all my life. But I'd like to back up and rest a little myself. And you can too, Mr. Gage. You signed a little simple cake around here. I guarantee in a year or so you'll forget all about this dusty, <coughs> crooked, dingy yard. Right, Ben? Ben? Some people have trouble forgetting some things, Mama. Well, sure, I'll see you when he forgets it. I'll have time to look after you. Well done, Mr. Gage. You're right about one thing, Miss Eliza. That I can't dispute. You have worked hard. Don't sign it, Papa. Thank you, Mr. Gage. Now the chip. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plan a great, glorious celebration. And we'll ask your brother Luke to come there. The Navy will let him out. And we'll invite Stevie and Daisy and her husband, too. Except if she brings those whiny children of hers. Turn it over, Mr. Gage. Sign it on the back. Why do I have to sign it? Dawson, that's all. W.O. Gage, like it says on the front of the check. That can wait until I offer it, can it? To clear the check, Mr. Gage. I'm not used to these things. How do you clear it? You sign it. Then I'll deposit it in the Dixieland account, and then we'll draw checks on it. We? Yes. You take what you want. I'll take what we need for Jean's college, for Dixieland, and anything else we need. I think I'll wait to cash it until I get to Chapel Hill. The bank has a branch there, doesn't it, Will? Why would you want to cash it at Chapel Hill? This is my check, isn't it? I'm the one who had the foresight to buy this little pie cornered lot 31 years ago for $400. Money from the estate of Cynthia L. Gant, deceased. I guess I'm entitled to the profit. Mr. Gant, if you're thinking of getting my dad right. Miss Eliza, I've been wanting to get away from here for a long time. I'm taking Gene with me. I'm going to put him in that college there at Chapel Hill. Now? Now. And then I'm going to travel. And when Gene's free in the summer, we'll travel together. And there's nothing in this whole wide world that you can do to stop it. And I can just see the word Dixieland forming on your cursed lips. What about Dixieland? Nothing for Dixieland? No, not one damn red cent. You've plenty of property on your own you can sell. If it's rest and comfort you really want, then sell it, then sell it. But I think you like it. Because then that makes us feel sorry for you. I do feel sorry for you too. From the bottom of my heart. Well, Eugene? Papa, I can't go now. Why not? You haven't got any better clothes. So you might as well go as you are. I guess we should say our goodbyes. So long, dear. Hurrah, Angel. I'll arrange for us to be together. <coughs> Goodbye, Ben. Tell Helen. Tell Helen I'll write to her. You won't get away with this. I will let you fall off. All right, all right, all right. There's your check. I guess I can't prevent you from going down to the bank and getting another check. But it won't work. Because I'll place an injunction against you. I'll prove you're not responsible to sell this property or even own it. I'll get guardianship over you. Everyone knows the times you've been in the cure, the times you've threatened me, the times you've tried to kill me. I'll tell them. You're a madman, Mr. Gaines. A madman. And you won't get away with it. I'll fight you tooth and nail, tooth and nail, and I'll win. All the things you've said about me are true, Miss Eliza. I've only brought you pain. Why don't you let me go? Because you're my husband, Mr. Gant. That's why. You're my husband. Thirty-one years together, we've gone on, and we must go on. House divided against itself cannot stand. We must learn to love and understand each other now. We must try. Take her home, will you, Will? 
Eugene, go over to Lockridge and give me a bottle. You heard me? No, Papa. Are you still paddling along after your mother? Well, leave Gina alone. Want to get sick? Do it yourself. Oh, ungrateful sons. The sad waste of you is the red moon of all our mistakes. Fallen Titan. You might have succeeded if you hadn't tried to take it. Could still make it, but he won't try again. They loved each other once. <laughs> they had to have one moment in time where it was perfect. What happened? It frightens me, Ben. How can something so perfect turn into that torture? They're strangers. They, they don't even know each other. No one ever really comes to know anyone. That's not true. I know you. I know Laura. You stupid little fool. No matter what arms may clasp us, what heart may warm us, what mouth may kiss us, we remain strangers. We can never escape it. Never. Never. Ben? Never. Oh, Ben! Oh. <coughs> You're burning up! Put your arms around me. I'm gonna take you home. I can't. <laughs> it's all right. I'm just tired. <coughs> Crazy idiot. Why didn't you tell anyone you were sick? <coughs> to hell with them, Jane. <laughs> to hell with them all. <laughs> Don't give a damn for anyone. <laughs> no one gives a damn for you. <laughs> oh, there are good days. And there are bad days. That's all there is. <laughs> A lot of days. Oh my God, is there no freedom on this earth? Hello? <coughs> Hello? Dr. McGuire, come quick, it's Ben. And still you smile. <coughs> Second class seaman, Luke Gant. G A N T, Gant. I don't know why you can't hear me! W.O., you don't have to shout because it's long distance. Oh, shut up, you. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Do what? I am standing back on the telephone. All right, all right. Can you hear me now? All the perversities. Very well, I will repeat. Yesterday, I sent a telegram to my son, Luke Gant, to come home that his brother Ben has pneumonia. Can you tell me if he... Oh, he did leave? Why didn't he let us know? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. They gave him leave? You made good connections. You're off the beaters by right now. That'll be all right, W.O. I remember when little Grover was ill in St. Louis and Eliza sent for me. I didn't get there on time. Did you reach him? He was on his way. It's all nonsense, of course, but it's far from dying. You do love to dramatize, Mr. Kent. Still, it'd be nice to see Luke. Mama, when can I see Ben? When the doctor says, child. But I'll tell you what, when you go up there, don't make it out like Ben's sick. Just laugh it off, make a joke of the whole thing. Mama! Well, it's a sick one's frame of mind that counts. I remember when I was teaching school in Harmony Township, I had pneumonia. Nobody expected me to live, but I did. I got better somehow. I remember I was sitting down, I reckon I was convalescing as the fellow says, and old Doc Fletcher was there. And just as he got up to go, he shook his head at my cousin Sally and she said, why Eliza, what on earth, she said. He said, you're spitting up blood every time you cough. You've got consumption as sure as you live. Sure, I said. I remember I was determined just to make a big joke of it. Just laugh about the whole thing. And I didn't believe a word of it, I said. Not a single word. It's because I didn't believe it. Then I got bed. Eliza, don't run on so. The doctor says Mama can come in for a few minutes, but no one else yet. How is he? You know, Dr. McGuire, if you can get anything out of him. Oh, God, I don't like the feel of it. I don't like the feel of it. <coughs> McGuire, you don't stop hovering over me. Smothered to death. <coughs> Both of you in here. 
here soaking up oxygen. <coughs> Leave that door open. Mama's here, Ben. Why, hello there, sir. <coughs> Did you think I was never coming to see you? Ben, Mama's here. <coughs> can you talk? Why doesn't he look? Ben, you can hear what's going on, can't you? I wish you'd all just get out and leave me alone. What kind of talk is that? You have to be looked after, sir. Let Mrs. Park look after me. Ben! McGuire, where's Fatty? I want to see Fatty. Ben, how can you speak that way? Your mother and your sister? If it weren't for that woman, you wouldn't be sick right now. Drinking, carousing with her night after night. Fatty! Fatty! You should be ashamed of yourself. Mrs. Gant, he needs some more cold cloths. Fiend! Do you have to add to her misery? If you need something, ask me. That's all right, Mrs. Pert. Ben wants you here, and that's all I care about. You'll be called if you're needed, Helen. This is the last time you come to this house, Dr. McGuire. Fatty. Fatty, stay by. Sing to me a baby's prayer at twilight. Ben, don't speak. Daddy, hold my hand. How is he? He couldn't stand to see me worried about him. That's what it was, you know. He couldn't stand to see me worried. Jesus, it's fearful that this should be put on me, old and sick as I am. You shut your mouth, you damned old man. Everything's been done for you, everything! And you'll be here when we're all gone. So don't let us hear about your sickness, you selfish old man. Makes me furious! If any of you are interested, Ben is a little better. Ben's better? Why didn't you say so before? I could have told you, I could have told you, I had a feeling all along. Yes, I'll be right back. all relax now. It's both lungs now. I can't see it. Say to it, they stick around. I'm going next door and phone for some oxygen. It may ease it a little for you. I won't be long. What about Luke? Luke will be furious when he finds he came all this way for nothing. For nothing? You call Ben getting well for nothing? Oh, you know what I mean, Miss Eliza. I'm gonna go take a little nap. I'm gonna go take a little dip. That's you can come up and search my room if you don't believe me. Miss Bagel, did you hear? The crosses is past. Ben's getting fed. We're so happy for you, Mrs. Gant. I could have told you I had a feeling all along. Oh, not that he didn't have a bare hot fever, I admit that, but my second. Hello there! Luke! Mama. Mama. Well, if it isn't the sailor himself, how are you? I'm fine, you. How goes it? Aren't you going to kiss your old mother? Old? You're getting younger and stronger by the minute. Oh, I am, son. I am. I feel it now that Ben's going to get better. The old boy's better? Luke. Helen. How's my boy? Slick as a puppy's belly. I thought you all might need some cheering up. I brought you ice cream from Woodruff's. Naturally, you wouldn't be looking at it if you didn't. Welcome home, Lindsay. My God! Doesn't anyone buy you any clothes? Look at that hair! Mama, looks like an orphan. Cut off those damn big feet of his, he'd go up in the air. How long have you got? Can you stand me for 24 hours? <laughs> Who's that? Oh, that's Miss James from Virginia. Laura, this is another one of my sons, Luke Gant. How do you do, Mr. Gant? How do you do? Oh, all right, you come over here and hate us. I better finish off this ice cream before it melts. Maybe Ben would like some. I bought some stash of special more. Tell your father the Admiral is here. Can I see Ben now? Oh, the truth is, uh, Pert's up there living now. Mrs. Pert is? I wouldn't go into it, Luke. It's a somewhat fraught with subject. <clears throat> oh, boy. I know what that is. Still the same old happy household. Nonsense. I have nothing against the war. Many ideas, but she's a fixture here. First thing in the morning, I'm gonna ask her to move. She pays her rent, doesn't she? No, she pays it. Then you're never gonna ask her to move. Don't kid me. The paying customers are what matter around her mama. 
Aren't they? Luke Gang, I have certain standards to hold up for the reputation of Dixieland. What kind of standards? The old dopey who hung himself in the same bedroom where Ben had to sleep for eight years after he cut him down? And all those amateur femme fatales who passed under your protection here, waylaying us in the hall and in the bathroom. Mama, we never had a safe moment. People think you find out about life in the Navy. Luke Gang, I'm warning you. It's a good thing you're teasing. Remember the early mornings when Ben and Jean and I used to take the paper out together? Remember, Jean? Old Ben used to make up stories for us about all the sleeping people and all the sleeping houses. He always used to throw the paper as lightly as he could because he hated to wake us. Remember, Jean? And that book of old baseball stories Ben used to read to us like by the hour. What was it, Jean? You know me, Al. My ring larger. Here, Jean Chalian. Mrs. Gant, what is it, Mrs. Gant? I can't catch his breath. Jean, get the doctor. You ridiculous woman, the doctor told me he was better! What the hell's all the commotion about? Luke, welcome home! Papa, that's not doing so well. Jesus, have mercy! That this should be put on me, cold and sick as I am. Not enough. First Grover, now Ben. For God's sake, Papa, try to behave decently. For Ben's sake. McGuire, you've got to save him, you've got to save him. The old died, no one cares. But the young. Oh, I don't care, Papa. I don't care. <laughs> you women step back and let him get air. <laughs> it's one way to step out of the photograph, isn't it, Fatty? Ben, don't think it. Mama. 
Whoever you are, be good to Ben tonight. Be good to Ben tonight. <gasps> Baker with the morning papers. Plop, 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 plop. Oh, how I used to love that sound. Every time the heavy bag getting lighter. I'll always feel sorry for people who have to carry things. It's getting light. It's nearly dawn. Oh, Mama gets up so early. Did you know that every morning before she wakes up, she visits Ben's grave? Don't go yet. Do you think I want you on your last morning here? Jean. Jean. Oh, Laura. I love you so. When I'm with you like this, it's so natural. Are all men like me? Tell me. I told you I've never known anyone like you. But you have known men. It would be strange if you hadn't. A woman so loving, so beautiful. You make me feel like I only used to dream of feeling. I've hardly had to daydream in weeks except about us. What did you used to dream about? I always wanted to be the winner, the general, the spearhead of victory. And then following that, I wanted to be loved. Victory and love, unbeaten and beloved. I am that now, truly. Laura. Will you marry me? Darling. You knew I was going to ask you, didn't you? You knew I couldn't let you go even for a day. <coughs> yes, I knew. You're happy with me. You know I make you happy. And I'm so complete with you. You know that $300 Ben left me. He would want me to use it for us. I'll go with you to Richmond today. I'll meet your parents so they don't think I'm an irresponsible fool who's stolen you. That may be a little hard to prove, <laughs> uh, but, but there is a job I can get. Would you mind living in Altamont? I don't care where we live. Just keep holding me. I'm going to have to tell Mama first. Let's not worry about that now. Tell me about us. All the treasures the world has in store for us, we'll see and know them all. There won't be a state in this country we won't know. The great names of Arizona, Texas, Colorado, California. We'll ride the freights to get there if we have to. And we'll go to Europe and beyond. 
the cool green land of Shakespeare, the gloomy forests of Gaul, the great Assyrian plains where Alexander feasted, the crumbling walls of Babylon, the palaces of the kings of Egypt, the towering white crags of Switzerland. Oh, my God, Laura, there might not be time enough for it all. There will be time enough, my darling. If the Richmond train leaves at noon, I have to get packed. You do love trains, don't you? I love only you. Will you have confidence in me, the unbeaten and beloved? I will have confidence in you, my darling. I'll never have to sneak out of this room again. <laughs> Gee! I will love you. Always. I thought you would have guessed it by now. Why did I know? Why did I see? I'm sorry, Mama. We couldn't wait any longer. Jane, don't make this mistake. She's so much older than you. Don't throw yourself away, boy. Nothing you can say will change my mind. Did my plans for you? What are my plans for you? What of your plans, Mama? I have my own life to live. But you don't know. Gee, you know that sometime property of mine? I sold it just yesterday so that you could go to Chapel Hill. You've always wanted an education, and you can have it now, son. You can have it. It's too late. It's too late. Well, Lord's never too late for anything. It's what Ben wanted, you know. Laura and I are leaving. I have to get back. Gee! Three, two, please. What are you calling Uncle Will so early? No, no, I know. I heard. Yes, I know it's early. Will, listen to me. You know that's a tough time property of mine. I want you to sell it. Now, this morning. Will, don't you argue with me. Paul Cash Ripon, he's been after me for weeks to sell it. I know what I'm doing. I'll explain it later. Just do what I say that. Well, it's never too early in the morning to turn a train, is it? What are you selling? Some property I own. Why don't you put a little of that money into getting somebody else to help you that altar of yours? The kitchen stove. Hell, then get breakfast ready, will you? I'll be back later, you ready? Jean comes down. Keep him in here, will you? Oh, all right. You let me know when I can let out. Mrs. Gant, I've been expecting you. I should think you would. Mrs. Gant, before you say anything, how about? I never thought such a mature woman in a time of trouble like this would take advantage of a child, a mere child. Mrs. Gant, if you would just listen to me. I'll please. listen to nothing. You take your things and get out of this house. Mrs. Gant, I should have known the moment I laid eyes on you. Well, I'm looking for a room, Mrs. Gant, why butter wouldn't melt in your mouth. I'm not marrying you, Jean. I wish with all my heart I could. You can't lie out of it. Jean just told me. I'm engaged to be married to a man in Richmond. You kind of wicked thing you play with my child. Mrs. Gant, this isn't easy. I should have told Jean long ago. But I, I didn't. A girl about to get married finds herself facing a lot of responsibilities. I've never been good with responsibilities. Jean knows how I am. How I like to take walks in the woods and how I like 
like to listen to music, and I like to dream. I know I'm older than Eugene, but in a lot of ways I'm younger. The thought of marriage frightened me. I told my fiance I needed time to think things over. I fell in love with Eugene. I experienced the kind of romance that I'd never known before. But I also found that it's not the answer. Eugene is a wonderful boy, Mrs. Gant. He needs to go to college. He needs to have room to expand and grow. To find who he is, he can't be tied down at this point in his life. And I know now that I need a family. I need a home, I need children. I need a husband. In this world, there are rules. Very good rules for people like me about marriage and happiness and I've broken too many of them already. I telephoned Philip last night. He's meeting me on the early train at the depot. We're going off to Charleston together and we'll be married there. He loves me and I will love him too after a while. I wrote this letter for Eugene. I couldn't just tell him. Will you say goodbye to Mr. Gant for me? Tell him I hope he feels better. And my goodbyes to Mr. Platt and the others. And to Helen. Especially to Helen. She works so hard. Goodbye, little room. I've been happy. Someday you're going to let him go too, Mrs. Gant. I thank you for all the hours of loneliness I've had here, for every dirty cell you gave me to sleep in, <coughs> for the ten million hours of indifference and these two minutes of cheap advice. Well, you'll be punished if there's a god in heaven. Oh, but there is, because I have been punished. Mama, I shall spend the rest of my life trying to get my heart back ridding myself of every scar you put on me since I was a child. The first move I made from the cradle was for this door. And every move since has been an effort to escape. And now, at long last, I am free! Free from all of you! I shall spend the rest of my life trying to get some order out of this chaos. If it should take me 20 years more, alone. Jean, you're not leaving! You weren't looking. I've already gone. <laughs> now, do you suppose I could get some breakfast? <laughs> well, do you mind if I make a fire in the fireplace? If I can't get any food to keep me alive, I can get a little warmth out of this drafty barn. Someday I'm gonna burn down this old house. Just pile in all the logs that old cradle hold. And all the furniture. And all the wood-headed people around here. And some kerosene. So this old barn takes off like a giant cinder blazing through the sky. That'll show them all 15 miserable, miserable rooms burn. Listery. I just wish you would, Mr. Gate. I just wish you would. You think I'm joking? By just getting drunk enough, I will. Serves it right. Miserable, unholy house. Why, Miss Eliza? I'll do it myself. I'll tear you down, house. I'll tear you to pieces. Let him up, Mrs. Dan. Eliza, can't have you gone back? Damn part. Traps me on nature. Damn part. You come out here. What are they doing? What they are doing? Tearing down this 
Christmas murder is strapped, that's what. Maybe the hatchet dude would send the warden back. And there we go, that bright is dead. Run, scatter brains, run, you have to go. Here's the hatchet, W.O. Give it to me. Stop it, Dan, stop this. Go to Mrs. Haskell, Mama! Look at him, run. Woo! Miss Eliza, what a woman you are. such a miserable day after all. Got any money, son? I've got Ben's money. We'll go, Gene. Go for the boat, boss. Keep right on going. Goodbye, Papa. Goodbye, Gene. You're gonna bust loose, boy. You're gonna bust loose all over this dreary planet. I reckon you've made up your mind all right. Yes. I have. Well, I'll deposit the money and check and he'll pay for you. It's awfully funny, though, that you just can't say a day or two more with Ben gone and all. But that's all right. I know your mind's made up and I'm not complaining. Means all the use you've ever had for me is to cook and sew. Mama, don't think you can work on my feelings at this last minute. I've hardly seen you all summer long. Well, when you get up there, you're going to want to look up your own medicine and not lose it. Your Aunt Lucy took a great liking to you when she was down here, and in a strange town, it's awfully good to have someone you know. And when you see your Uncle Emerson, you just might want to tell him not to be surprised to see me any time now. I reckon I can pick right up and light up the same as the next fellow when I gave in. I'm not going to spend my life slaving over a bunch of boys. Don't pay. I called Cash Rankin the other day. He said, why, Eliza? If I had your head for figures, I'd be a rich man, and here's what I'm going to do. If we start building our house now, we can, we can be in there by spring. I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I hate to see you go, son. Bye, Mom. Try to be happy, child. Try to be a little more happy. Let them know out there that you are somebody. 